What up guys? Yeah, we got another Oktoberfest beer review coming at you. And this time around, we got a classic. One I did do last year, but just had to do it again. It is the Vian Stefner Feist beer. It, um, I mean, Vian Stefner for me is one of the, I mean, one of the greatest breweries anywhere. It, everything I have from them is amazing. It's just delicious. Uh, I mean, their cloudy wheat beer to me might be the best wheat beer anywhere in the world. But that's beside the point. This is um, one of their Oktoberfest beers. And I believe it is the Oktoberfest beer. I don't think they have others. Um, but it is 5.8% ABV on the lower side of things. But hopefully it's delicious. And let's get into the review. Get the Painter's tape. Even though, from the angle that you guys are seeing, this doesn't really change anything at, like, at all. Everything else is getting better for my camper renovation project. So hopefully in the next like two weeks, in two weeks I should say, I'll be out on the road and I'll be able to show more angles than this. But anyways, let's start pouring. And you know it's their, the official Oktoberfest beer because they have the, that official blue and white checkered uh, tablecloth, whatever. And here you go, super duper clear. You instantly, you can really smell that, um, ooh, okay, no, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, let's get into the review, get into the smell, and you, Maybe it's because I'm in more of an enclosed space, so the aroma has no place to go, but then just hang out with me. But as soon as you pop it open, you get that uh, like Pilsner lager kind of um, dampness to it. You, I mean, it's very prominent as soon as you crack open like the beer. I haven't even gone in for a sniff yet, and you get that, that kind of grainy, uh, lagery, or Pilsner aroma to it. You get a bit of a lemongrass kind of thing. You get some of like a, a lighter maltiness to it. I do not believe this is going to be a heavily malted beer. Um, again, it's been a year since I've had this, so I don't remember. But it's going to be a very, I mean, I think very light on that malt, um, Oktoberfesty kind of thing. There's a bit of almost a spiced date kind of aroma to it. You have some of that, yeah, that kind of, again, that, that wet wheat, um, wet grain kind of aroma that you get in, you know, some, or a lot of lagers and pilsners. It's, um, in other beers, it might be almost skunky, that skunky aroma to it. You don't get, that's not what's happening with this. It's, it's, uh, it's brought back enough for so you're not getting like just that skunk aroma, but it's just enough to get that kind of that wet grain kind of thing. But realistically, this just kind of smells like um, a slightly heavier wheat kind of lager thing going on. There's, um, it, it smells like a nice kind of, again, beer to close out the summer, begin the fall kind of thing. Um, but I don't know, I think it smells fine. If for anybody that likes that bit of skunkiness to it, this is gonna be good. There's just a hair going on in it. Um, at least that's what I'm picking up. 
Uh, I'm assuming that this batch, this beer is from this year and it wasn't a holdover from the store that just held on to it and like, oh no, wait, uh, um, send it out uh, next year. Uh, I don't think these beers have a born on date kind of thing. Um, I don't know, there's some numbers on it that I'm not really sure. So I don't think it has anything like that. So I would assume it's for 2020, but I don't know. The aroma's fine. I'm gonna recommend it on aroma. Let's get into taste. Okay. Most of that skunky thing, gone. Not picking that up anymore. There is a very little bit of that lemon grass. I'm not gonna go lemon, it's not that kind of a citrusy. So it's more mild. So I'm gonna go more with a, a lemon grass. You don't get that, that sharp kind of bitterness to it. But there's enough there, although it's really kind of encapsulated with um, a maltiness. The malt, uh, it's not heavy malt, but it's there to kind of like take over. Like you get a bit of that lemongrass kind of initially and then the malt is like, no, boom. This is Oktoberfest. But yeah, the, the maltiness is kind of like a, like a peppery um, date kind of thing. You get a, a bit of that kind of charcoaly, um, textury taste to it on the tip of my tongue. That's where I'm getting at. That's also kind of where that like that pepper kind of thing is going on. But you still get that that really. Um, pronounced like German lager kind of thing. That kind of taste that you expect from a German lager. I, you're definitely getting some of the, um, like the grains in with that. But this is, this has more of a malt presence than I was expecting. From the aroma, I wasn't, I, you know, you could, you knew it was there, but it's kind of like lying in wait, you know, like, I don't know what to really compare it to, but yeah, you, you smell it, you know it's there, not super pronounced, you think it's gonna be lighter. You drink it, it's not like a super crazy, like super bitter, um, you know, like burnt toast uh, malt, but it's very prominent. Yeah, definitely that um, kind of charcoaly kind of taste. And it's really, the more I'm getting into this, it's really kind of feeling my entire mouth. It's not just at the tip. It's really kind of like just, just taking over. And I think it's good. It's got a bit of that um, lemon grassy kind of thing going on because I think it, it helps it from, helps the malts from just totally taking over. But um, it's there. It's, um, yeah, if you like a, just a solid malty beer that, again, isn't like uber, like scratch your tongue malt, I think this is pretty good to go. Um, I almost wish I had, was further into my Oktoberfest drinking beers um, for the season and then to bring this on. Because sometimes you kind of forget what some Oktoberfest beers taste like and how, you know, the robust maltiness. And, um, so I won't be able to come, this is early on, so I'm not gonna be able to compare it to, um, like last time I think I had this, I had like 20 Oktoberfest beers, and then I brought this on and I was able to be like, oh, this is what it's supposed to be like. Um, but this really is the, like, if you're looking for almost a lager, a German lager with some malty Oktoberfest like notes going on. This absolutely is what you want. Um, it's 5.8 percent ABV, which is very much on the lighter side. Um, 
for me, it's definitely enjoyable, but I, I like, a, I don't know, I don't remember what I did. I did not watch my previous um, review of this from last year, but it's not completely knocking out of the park for me. I think just because of the, I think maybe it's just because of the brand, I, I was just, uh, you know, you have such high expectations for it, and it's just not fully, like, you know, you, you, you hit a, a triple on an air. No, you're not, it didn't completely knock it out of the park. And, um, I mean, taste-wise, I'm still gonna recommend it. It's a solid, solid, um, end of summer into fall, Oktoberfest kind of thing, which is pretty, pretty much what Oktoberfest is. You know, Oktoberfest is in September, all that stuff. And so, this time of year, I think it's great. I guess I was, for some reason, I was expecting more, but I'm still gonna recommend it taste, because it, it does taste good. Um, next category is vine for price. Yeah, you know, the price is fair, and um, the good thing is for this particular German beer, you can generally find it at most in most locations. Any place that sells more than like a half dozen beers and has any kind of import presence at all, you're probably gonna find this. That is one of the slight issues with the boom of um, the craft beer is a lot of the imports have been kind of pushed to the side and so some of those fan freaking fantastic imports are a little harder to find sometimes um, unless you have like a giant like total wine or so uh, whatever dealership or dealership <laughs> i would like a car of vine stuffner please post haste um so you know yeah so you, depending on uh, where you're at as long as there's imports, you should be able to find this. And if you're struggling to find it, you can probably go to like a world market. World market generally has a decent import um, Oktoberfest selection. And they might even package it with other German beers. Sometimes they have like a nice like six or 12 pack where it's all like Oktoberfest beers from different German breweries. That's a fantastic way to go if you want to, if you don't want to buy the full six packs. Um, but for price, it's fair. It was a couple blocks. It wasn't crazy. Um, you know, you, you're gonna pay a hair more than what you would for uh, a, a, a local uh, micro, but you know, this is the world's oldest brewery, and it's definitely, I, I think it's fine. I'm gonna recommend it on, on value price. It's, it's, for what you're getting, it's totally fine. Um, distinction, how distinct is it? And it is, it is lighter than a lot of the Oktoberfest beers. It has a bit of that, uh, not quite skunky, but getting there aroma, which um, at least so far this year, I haven't had that um, in a lot of them. Maybe moving forward, I'll, it'll, I'll get to that, but um, as of this year, it's haven't gotten into that yet. But it still has that maltiness that you're kind of looking for in Oktoberfest beer, which it's much more pronounced than you'd guess cracking it open. And uh, I think because it is almost a lager, there's lager elements to it that it is different enough from a lot of the other Oktoberfest beers that it's you could probably pick it out of the lineup um, once you've uh, had your share of Oktoberfest beers. So distinction, yeah, I'll recommend it on that. Uh, drinkability, it's... Uh, yeah, you know, it drinks fine. It's, I mean, it's Oktoberfest beer, so you already kind of know what you're getting into. You already know you're going to get some of that maltiness that's going to go on into it. If you've had any kind of Oktoberfest beer at all, you know that's what you're getting into. You're going to get a, like a malt heavy or heavier beer than what you've been exposed to for the summer duration. And so, you know, you know, you are, you're expecting it. It's not taking you by surprise. Um, it's not like the first time I had a sour beer. I never heard of it. I drank it and I I started laughing. I think I have that video on the channel. The very first sour beer, I, like I found it, of course I also thought it was a gimmick. <sighs> it's just what I know. I still think sours or certain sours are kind of like a lambic, a gimmick of a lambic, but that's a totally different rant. Um, now I lost my train of thought. Um, drinkability, yeah, drinkability is fine. I don't remember where I was going with that. But I'll recommend on drinkability. Um, last category is when I buy it again. And this is where the almost micro seasonal thing, like time frame, 
becomes an issue. Because Oktoberfest, you have, there's a couple that come out end of August. Most of them will come out, hopefully, sometime in September, and you have some stragglers in October that don't realize that Oktoberfest was the month before, whatever. So you don't have a lot of time with these beers. And so you, if you if you find one that you fall in love with, absolutely, you're gonna stick with that. If you're not in love with it, you just gotta move on. And it almost pains me to say it, but I'm not in love with this one. It's enjoyable, I'd have no problem drinking it, but I'm there's just other ones I'm more curious about the other ones that I haven't had yet. Or, you know, some of the ones I've already had are actually pretty good. And so it's just like, I don't want to say never because I wouldn't turn it down, but I just think there's going to be other ones I'd rather get right at this particular moment in time. So I'm going to give it a half on buy it again because I don't know. I think again, maybe just because of the brand, I had higher expectations. I don't know, but um, I'm going to give it a half of that. But um, yeah, so that is my review for Vian Stefan, uh, Vian Stefaner. Always, you know, Vihan Stefner, Feist Beer, um, 2020. Uh, have you had it this year? What do you think? Um, if you are a an annual drinker of this, do you notice minute changes? Do you think it's because of just the packaging? If it was in the sun longer, uh, maybe it's been sitting around. And do you question whether this was actually the 2020 release? Because this is, I believe, is the exact same labeling that they used last year. I kind of wish some of these places would use different labeling just so I could be like, ah, that's different. You didn't just keep that in the back um, that you didn't sell for 11 months and bring it back out because you, you don't know. Uh, because I just, I don't think this has any, unless you guys know what this 5260 means, maybe that's, uh, uh, I don't know. But anyways, that's the review. Let me know what you think. Um, like, subscribe, do all the good stuff. Again, I'm gonna be hitting the road in the next couple weeks and going all over the place. If there is a local brewery you think I should check out, let me know in the comments. If there's a local beer you think I should check out, let me know in the comments. Especially Christmas beers. If you have a favorite Christmas beer, Christmas brewery, let me know. I love a good Christmas ale. And that'll be about the time of year that I'll be driving around. Especially in the Southeast Southwest. Because, um, yeah, I'm not gonna be driving around up north in the snow. But anyways, that's review. And so for myself and for Vian Stefner Feisbeer, take it easy.